I'd like to introduce the software which is paired with Open SCAD, but it's called Graph SCAD. Now, the Open SCAD itself is impressive because you can mathematically, I guess in a programming fashion, draw shapes and and geometric figures. But I always had, if I didn't use it for a while, I found that I always had to look up the function and its syntax. So if I, if I draw something and two months later I have to use it again, I sort of, well, well how was that? And have to look back at the reference. Now here comes GraphSCAD. Now GraphSCAD is very simple to use. Just uh, right, uh, right click the mouse button and out pops a bunch of nodes and if you click on object uh, you get a bunch of different um, things you can choose from so let's start with a uh, sphere for example okay so the sphere is uh, oh yeah, to uh, zoom in and out uh, is through the mouse wheel button. So uh, now, if you ex if you were to export this in STL, then you have to use the Open SCAD to uh, to do the export. But for now, we'll just uh, see what happens. So with this option chosen here the auto refresh is on so whenever you make a modification then it will automatically come up on the this on the display and it will compute now when your drawing becomes a little bit complicated then the auto redraw may not be very fast in any event um, let's see uh, well we can subdivide the faces put 30 instead 60 higher than 100 it becomes uh, really tedious to work so we'll keep the facets divided like that um, depending on what you do you can choose uh, very limited subdivisions so you end up with a with a drawing that's um, really chunky sometimes it could be done by uh, by choice so if you want to draw an object like that then it would be difficult but if you just choose six in your sphere then you have a prism if you choose three but let us go and still make a sphere and We'll make it 50. All right. So I didn't have to use syntax at all to do this. And if I want to, I can transpose this to whatever number I want. So one, two, three, and just move it aside. If I want to make it higher. Okay. So yeah, just the radius you put it there. So I use a quarter radius, a uh, quarter of the diameter. So uh, anyway, so that's how to make a primitive sphere. Now we could use a few other primitives. Um, one of them from the objects. You can choose a cube, a cylinder. So let's choose a cube. Uh, of course, my cube is going to be really tiny. Let's make this five. All right, so uh, my cube is here. Let's make it uh, five by five and by one, and make it centered. Now, if you make it centered, of course, then everything is centered, but if you want it higher 
than zero. Let's say you're making a 3D model. Then you would have to make the size divided by two. So one divided by two. So there. Okay. So that's all nice and, and everything. So let's try to make a little bit, bit more complicated shapes. For that, we're going to have to Okay, let's just set the ball, the sphere, on top of my cube, or rectangle, anyway. And um, let's try a Boolean operation. And we'll set to difference now. So the first one is going to subtract from the second one. Let's see what happens here. And of course, my shape is subtracted now if I wanted to go deeper I would have to uh, So what's nice about it is we can see right away what's going on with our geometrics and what kind of shape that we have without having to code. Um, so very complicated shapes could be made out of this uh, uh, as you can tell and, and just just uh, doing an intersection actually uh, changes the boolean but in union these two become the same so as you can tell right now you can make very complicated shapes just from adding and subtracting things that's without even repeating or anything like that so that's why I recommend even for kids uh, and and serious modelers, the use of GraphSCAD along with uh, OpenSCAD to start programming and making shapes without having to learn how to actually make a CAD or a CAD drawing without learning modeling tools. Uh, of course once you're done your model then you have to uh, press press F6 to render and then the rendering is done and now you can export to slew of different things uh, STL is one of them so that can be sent to STL is going to be in millimeters so the sizes and everything is going to be okay uh, for 3d printing stay tuned for the next little uh, video on graph SCAD. I really like this program and that's why I want to uh, introduce it to more people thank you There are more videos to come, so please subscribe.